Shut up, compressor. Hey everyone, Matt here with Tugs Models, and welcome to episode 9 of the F4B Phantom Build. This episode, we're going to be focused on the metallics, so specifically the leading edge core guard on the wings, and all of the, let's see if I can pick this up without fucking everything up, and all of the super fun heat shielding back around the exhaust. So, let's get this first part knocked out, shall we? Now, for the core guard, there's really only one option, color-wise, and that is some good old Tamiya LP11. They're silver. This stuff is phenomenal, and everything is all masked off and ready to go. I have to say, and I'll kind of narrate as I mix this shit up, I have to say that the tape job for this is a huge pain in the ass, especially on the folded wings, because you got to get, like, you know, inside here and all that. You got to worry about when you're spraying the outside, not getting overspray over here, so I've got some plans for that as well. But it's one of those little details on a Phantom that really pops when you'll see it in, you know, reference photos and stuff. So I wanted to be sure that I was capturing it. But I can see why a lot of modelers just skip it, because it's not really called out very well in the instructions, and masking it is a huge pain in the ass. I was originally going to try to mask it first and then paint everything else, but getting this little thin-ass leading edge masked well without the tape peeling up and all that was just... It was just too much, so we're not doing that. Alright, so I'm thinning the LP11 with some Mr. Leveling Thinner. And if you have not sprayed LP11, I highly recommend you pick up a bottle of it because this stuff is magical. I, mean, I think it's probably my favorite Tamiya paint. So, stir it up, get it all happy. Now I'm going to use the leftovers of the masking sheet as kind of a barrier here so I don't get shit everywhere. Try to figure out how I can do this and still show you all what I'm doing. Okay. That's there. All right, now let's get this side sorted out, and after that I'm going to have to pause it so I can get the interior faces of the folded wings, just because that is a tough thing to shoot on the bench. I need to be able to pick the thing up and move it around and all that stuff. Okay, let me do the underside real fast, and then we will pause and I'll finish it off. As you can see, it's got shit all over it to prevent anything crazy from happening. Okay, now I'm going to pause so I can manhandle this thing and get the leading edges of the folded wings on the inside portion done, and then we'll be back to rip all the masking off. Okay, so here we are with everything unmasked, and we've got a corrugated leading edge. Nifty. Next up, it's time to move on to the heat shielding. Okay, now it is time to go ahead and mask off the rear section 
for painting the bare metal of the heat shields. So essentially, we have to mask off so that we can spray this ring right here that goes around the outside of the exhaust. All the stuff down here, this sort of trapezoidal pattern coming up right here and back, all the way up here around the top, the top back, and we've got to mask off the white of the stabilators so that we can spray all the bare metal areas in there as well. Now this is exceptionally tedious, and I'm not going to subject you all to sitting around watching me put tape on shit. But I am going to just quickly note, I'm going to be doing this using many little strips of tape. I do have a furball set that can allegedly mask all of this, but after using that on the flapperons, it was a bit frustrating. It's a, uh, it's not, you know, Tamiya style rice paper washi tape. It was a vinyl that was very thick and honestly, I was terrified it was going to lift paint the whole time. So instead I'm going to be using just tape to get in here, get all this stuff masked off, and then we will come back and start the prep for making it look like metal. Okay, so as you can see, the F4 has been pretty substantially masked off. The goal here to avoid any potential overspray of the metallic into areas we don't want it to get into. And as you can see here, the heat shielding area has been treated with a coat of MRP black fine surface primer. It's been sanded back a little bit, and then it's been hit with some Guns GX100 gloss which is a fantastic gloss. It's nice and tough, nice and shiny. And it's, you know, yeah, I could probably polish it to a shinier sheen than what we've got here, but we're talking heat shielding. You know, this isn't some sort of waxed down air racer. So now it's time to get into the metallics. And for this, I am gonna be using, at least as a base to build from, some custom service CHR06 magnesium. If you're not familiar with custom service, it is basically the resurrected K colors. It's, you know, very similar formula. It is alcohol based, but it's not quite as fragile as like the all clad high shines. It's a little bit tougher once you give it some time to kind of settle down. So that's a good thing. It also, in my opinion, makes the best metallic finish I have yet seen. Uh, maybe not this particular tone. You know, the magnesium is a little bit more subdued than others, but these things look really good. Yeah. So, for example, here is a test piece that I've been spraying. This is my trusty P47 mule that just keeps getting painted and stripped and painted and stripped over and over and over again. And so on here, you have a couple different tones. This is, I believe, natural aluminum up here magnesium sitting right next to it. It's a little bit darker, as you can see. This is just black. This is the aluminum, I believe the aluminum, with some black ink thrown into it. It makes a really cool sort of like bronzy type color. Then as we get back here, I fucked up right here. Got some more magnesium in this area. We've got some titanium, which is pretty fucking cool. And yeah, overall, I mean, this stuff just this stuff is amazing in terms of how clean it looks compared to a lot of other metallics. So with that, let's go ahead and start doing a little bit of spraying on the heat shielding areas. Now, before I touch this guy, we do have a bunch of little like offshoot things that need painting too. Starting with the stabilator plates. One thing I'll note about these is they do take a little bit of patience and time to sort of build up. So we'll call that good for now, even though it still looks black. These things don't seem to build linearly. They seem to build more in like a... Uh... Fuck, I forgot my math term. Not linearly. The other one where at first it's nothing and all of a sudden it's like, whoa, we've got coverage. So, slowly but surely. And you want to be patient, nice thin layers, and just let it build. 
as it's going to. Build nice and slow. We'll say though, even though it does build nice and slow, you still want to build it up as opaque as you can get it, because otherwise when you turn it sort of, you know, from like a weird glancing angle, it will still look black. And that lessens quite a bit if you put any sort of like, you know, flattish type clear coat on top of it, but that also kills some of the metallic sheen. So pick your poison. But the best way to avoid that, you know, black glancing view is to just make sure that you hit a certain opacity point and not do the all clad recommended thing of just dusting it on just enough to make it look shiny from like one direction. And keep in mind that as we go, this is going to shift a bit. So right now the magnesium is just to get that darker tone in place because this exhaust heat shielding area does have a whole lot of different tones going on. I basically just want to establish something first because I feel like going from a darker tone to a lighter tone is a lot easier than going the other way with these relatively low opacity metallics. I've had some test sprays where you, know, you try to put a dark color on top of the like the natural aluminum and it just vanishes. Like You can't see it. So... We'll go in reverse. Okay, so we've got a pretty good coat going on this piece here. Let's switch it up now and have some fun with stabilators. Zoom in a little bit too while we're at it. Yeah, it looks kind of shitty at first, doesn't it? <laughs> Gotta kind of build through that. And you can see that's the danger right there of not getting enough opacity. So you hit that bullshit. And again, just kind of keep going until that stops. Okay, so I think now we're at a pretty good point of opacity. And it still does the black thing there, but that's not what I'm seeing in person. So, plus it's also reflecting darker portions of the garage. But overall, I think this is about where we want this. So, just a few sprays around the trailing edge. I'm going to set this aside so that we can move on to the joy that is the actual Phantom itself. Okay, so I think this is a bit easier to see. I'm just going to handhold this thing. Let's go ahead and start some spray action, shall we?
Okay, you get the idea. I'm gonna go ahead and finish spraying out the base coat and we'll be back. Okay, next up, it's time for some Chrome 15 Natural Aluminum. This is a much brighter tone than the magnesium I've been using so far. And it is going to go basically around the exhaust surrounds and these upper plates. And because I am a lazy bastard, I'm not even gonna mask. I am just going to spray with my good old 771. And I'm pretty sure these weren't actually aluminum. I'm pretty sure they were steel, but this color does the trick. A lot of this is finding the right angle to spray it so you can see exactly what you're doing. Yay. Let's move it back here, keep the party going. So there we got it. Nice shiny looking heat shield thing going on back here with the darker work going on down below. Let's go ahead and move into this little piece because this little piece has the exact same story. Okay, and moving on to stabilators, I'm going to be really lazy about masking this, but I'm going to use this logic that masking so soon after spraying metallics is probably a bad idea. So we're going to do some very lazy masking. And voila. This side over here did some interesting stuff as it dried. As you can 
Let's see if we can see it. See, it kind of did this like weird splatter thing going on, which I don't necessarily hate, but I'm not too sure I'm a fan of it right here. So. Kind of keep the opacity coming there. But that's a good way to get, again, the different tones. We're going to leave that middle strip alone until we get to the weathering stuff. But these aft ones are easy to knock out, kind of right now at the end of a bench session. Okay, now it's time for Dura Aluminum. Okay. Got some turtle aluminum, and as you can see, it's got a slightly different tone than the natural aluminum out back. Probably not enough to really make a huge difference, but you know, subtlety is what we're after with this. Then, as we can here and remove the tape, you can kind of see what we're getting. Now this is all going to be bolstered with some stuff here in the rivet lines and all that. I'm currently gaming out how I want to approach that particular part of all this. Okay, next on the hit list, we've got some of the individual panels on the heat shielding here. And I am going to be painting these with custom service titanium, which is a nice dark metallic, just like the magnesium. Gone ahead and masked all that shit off, right? bit of a splurge there but not too bad it'll dry up nicely once the alcohol cooks off not going to be very noticeable, but whatever. All right, one more thing here. This one panel up here, I just want to So as you can see, there's a slight sheen difference going on there, which is kind of what I was after. Just something to break it up, make it look a little bit different. Okay. There we have it. Some nice subtle differentiation in the panels. Everything is happy. 
And at this point, I think we're about ready to unmask everything because there is still more that needs to happen here, but it doesn't involve any of the rest of the shit. It doesn't involve spraying crazy metallics all over the place. So, yeah. And after a whole lot of unmasking, here we are with the F4 heat shielding, at least the base layers of it, taken care of. Got some pretty good stuff going on there on the stabilators. And up underneath here, a lot of good visual interest going on. I don't know how well it's coming through in the video, but at least in person, the titanium and magnesium paneling down here on the lower heat shield has just a very nice, subtle difference in contrast between them. I also like, and I can't believe it took me this long to realize this, that the arrestor hook will hold the little insert panel in place for stabilators. Kick ass. So, next, I need to deal with the weathering going on in here, which has basically a bunch of vertical lines kind of lining up with the internal ribbing of the heat shielding here. Got to figure out how to crack that. Got to figure out how to crack some of the rivet stuff up here. And other than that, I'm planning on going pretty heavy with the exhaust smoke on this. So, you know, I basically just want a, a hint of something in here. Then it's going to be obliterated, <laughs> essentially. Uh, but no, no, not not really. But it is going to be nice and dark and sooty and gross down here. So I have a little bit of wiggle room and forgiveness. Okay, so we are now at a place where all of the base painting of the metallics is pretty much a wrap. You know, we still have to deal with, like, the vertical streaking in here on the heat shielding just after the exhaust, the various, you know, staining and shit around the rivets on the stabilators, but I think I'm going to save that for a little bit down the line because it doesn't require the masking, and we can get a bunch of other stuff done in the meantime. And honestly, I'm waiting for some tape to come in in order to handle some of this stuff. So... For now, I'm going to go ahead and call the metallic portion of this a wrap and move on to decals. So that means this is a great place to go ahead and end this episode and move right along to the next one. So thank you for watching. I hope this was enjoyable. hope you all uh, got a good look at these custom metallic... or hope you all got a good look at these custom service metallics in action. And I will catch you all in the next episode. Later.